all this gear and you left out the pizza oven. Look, guys, I put every weapon I could think of on this crate. All the surveillance gear I could find, this is as good as it gets. Welcome back to Retro Wednesday. The Tide Hero Hanger, this is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about this turtle van or party wagon with the underground arsenal on the way. NECA coming in later this year, Super 7 sometime next year. Let's go ahead and have a party wagon van review and talk about this thing. I never owned one of these as a kid. As an adult, I only really messed with shells missing every single part. And uh, well, everybody wants a little bit too much for complete vintage ones for whatever reason. But to get this for 25 bucks at Walmart, and they're probably at most Walmarts for $25. And some places, they'll probably go cheaper down the road if they're sitting on a whole bunch of them. So, good time to review this. Good time to talk about this and bring awareness. If this is something you want, we're going to talk about everything that I learned about this as we go. Coming up. So here's the box, and from what my friends tell me that this is probably the most accurate to the vintage box for any of the re-releases that we've seen. The Toys R Us one has some big something on the front, and so I, I don't really know all that, all the details. I just kind of take what they say and believe it because this does look pretty close. I did compare a picture, and there's slight differences. It's like shifted over one way or another. You can see more of these in the vintage one, but still. It looks very good and it feels very, very vintage and retro to me. So here it is right out of the package and I figured there'd be some assembly required. So kind of cool that this piece here is already on there. So I like that. And the door is already installed and all that kind of stuff. So that's yeah, some good stuff right there going on. So I'm going to pull all this out of here, plug it all on, see how it goes. All right, so there's a lot more assembly required with this than I realized. So go ahead and get into this first off I'm gonna start with I think I'm just gonna connect this looking at you're gonna put that on there and this seems kind of tight too and then this connects to here and then to there so here and here and I hear that those things pop off pretty easy let's go over to this side here and same thing Plug it in, plug it in. First time ever I'm doing this. I've seen these. I've never handled one really before other than one missing all the parts. So kind of cool, kind of fun, kind of exciting. Well, what's exciting is the what's going to come later when I get the the underground uh, arsenal. Underground arsenal? Oh, that'll be fun. Woo! Got that thing plugged in. What's next? I didn't even read the instructions. I didn't do it right. So this plugs into there and this plugs into this. Okay, there it goes. Then we plug this into here. And that's the array. That's that piece there, okay. And then this goes down and covers. Cool. What I just learned, because I've never handled one of these with a roof, is that when you lift the roof up, it opens the door, which that's cool. And you load these into here. Is there one specific way or can you load it either way? I think you just load them in. So these missiles are kind of cool too. Uh, they're screwed together, so they're made in two halves and screwed together so that's cool I wonder how you're supposed to hold it in how are they supposed to stay in place that's strange uh, again I've never had one of these so I don't know the last thing is this rubber band that's supposed to go right here so it goes from here to here they give you two of these so I don't know is this what they look like on the vintage one I don't know <laughs> I don't know I never had a vintage one so pretty cool let's get in and take a look at this guy all right, so it's all put together. It looks pretty good, actually, as a vintage one. I've seen vintage ones. I wonder if I get a truly vintage one and just strip the parts off this. Uh, I, maybe I should have, because I can go get one for five bucks at a, my buddy's shop there and uh, just see if the parts fit on it, which they should. They really should. But uh, and I don't know if it'd be better to have the vintage one. Does it feel more hefty and all that kind of stuff? So, but I, I like the way this looks and I like the fact that it's brand new and so that's kind of nice too. So anyway, looking at this overall, it does look like the turtle van. Now the intro, this split in half and they didn't do that. They didn't have it split in half. It just folds up. So that's gonna be something we're gonna be seeing in advancement in the future ones. Uh, this here, I haven't had any issues with this falling off just yet, but it, it looks pretty good so far. 
Uh, we can close this and kind of protect it. And then this side here, we got some nice stickers on it. The green rims are interesting and they're painted. So that's, that's kind of nice. And then on the back here, this is some engine and windows and stuff. Would have been cool if they actually were windows in here. You could see the figures, but I guess that's just not the way they designed it. Okay, so you get one party trick. And the one party trick is this. Lift this up and these things come flying out. <laughs> And you've got a figure that you can stick into here. So the van is okay. It's kind of cool, but it's not going to be any fun unless you get figures in it. So here's a bag of vintage figures I've got just laying around. And I figure, let's get some of these figures in here. Let's do something with this van. Okay, so let's look at the features of this van now. If you've got this and boom. Okay, so you can obviously ram through. <laughs> Rock setting, bebop, and all that kind of stuff. Now, let's take a look at what this looks like with a bunch of figures in it. And see if I can get a good angle on all this. So, the first thing, you have to do the, the battle action of lift this and boom. Now, I've got Leo right here. And I don't know if I would have had enough room. Maybe I would have to still have these bombs in there to roll out. But I don't know how good of a feature that is. So, I kind of don't like that feature so much. But it's, I guess it was an original feature, so there it is. So he hangs on okay, but he really can only just do more or less one stance. You can't have his feet up or anything, then there's no space in there, and it gets caught and hung. So that's an issue right there. So getting into what you can do with this. Now I've got a bunch of figures in here, and I had Splinter standing in there. So uh, kind of a tough top-down shot. So I've got four, five in the back, four seated, and one standing up. And then I got two of them driving. And it seems like the only way to get them into the driving, or one driver, one passenger, obviously. The only way to get them into that is through the opening in the back. So that is kind of strange. So I think with the newer ones, you're going to be putting them in with the driver and passenger door versus the loading like this. But then again, this is old school. It was made to be cheap and mass produced for children and just fun and let your imaginations ride. This thing here is fallen down a bit but I heard this is very problematic I haven't had much issues with it yet so I mean that's you lock it in place up or you put it down so lock it in place and leave it there so overall so far I'm liking this thing so let's go ahead and do some comparisons so since we just did the Thunder Take not too long ago right next to it they're about the same size the Thunder Take's a little bit longer this is a little bit taller so just kind of get it in your head around the same size, maybe shorter and taller, uh, uh, deeper and wider, I don't know, but still, it's about the right size. Here it is next to Kenner Mass Thunderhawk, way bigger, and the figures are way bigger also. Here it is next to Air Raid, which is by far my favorite vehicle in the Cops and Crook toy line, and it's, the Air Raid's much longer, but this thing is much bigger. Here it is next to the Silverhawks Mirage, and I was shocked to see how big a Silverhawks Mirage was. That thing is huge and fits five figures. That fits seven figures. Since it is a van, or everyone's gonna say, it's not a van, it's a party wagon. But since it is a van, there it is next to the Bionic 6 van. So really, the only other van I've got would be the A-Team van. Here it is next to an Ertl A-Team van. This is the die-cast version. The smaller one that is supposed to be for the 3.75 inch figures. A really rough looking vet for a team faces vet. In last comparison, Brave Star and 3030. Just so you can kind of get an idea of size and scale, Brave Star is almost as tall, or if not taller than this thing. Of course, much, much bigger scale with the Brave Star. So this has been my look at the retro Walmart turtle van that you can get for 25 bucks at Walmart, or probably cheaper pretty soon. If they still have them in stock, I am really looking forward to the blimp. I'd like to get my hands on the new blimp and see if I can make the new blimp modify to a vintage blimp lower piece. Does that dirigible or whatever you call that big blow up piece, can it be connected to this? Does it work with this? I'd like to know that. But I found this to be a fun little toy, almost exactly what I expected. But 
in a different way. I actually never knew how the thing worked, how, what triggered it, how the features were, what goes where exactly. This is all new experience to me. You get the experience right along with me. And probably if you've had this forever, laugh at me, but that's fun. As long as you had a fun Retro Wednesday, then my job was done. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you have the vintage one of these? Did you pick up one of the other four reissue iterations? Are you looking to get this at Walmart for 25? Do you think they'll go to 10? Like and subscribe to Dear Hanger out. left up there, we can turn that van into a tracking station and hunt down the Technodrome, but good. Couldn't we maybe have taken the elevator? Boy, check out this junk! I wonder if all this work is worth it. Finished. But the roof needs to be at least three feet higher, Donatello. Huh? Why? So I can practice while we're driving. Now, do you want to find the Technodrome or not? Yeah! Come on, April. Let's rev this baby up and motivate.